In the metal factory, iron ore is melted at high temperature and turned into liquid. Then, using special casting machines, this liquid iron is poured into molds and solidified lumps are obtained by cooling. The bamboo paper production process begins in the factory by first sustainably harvesting mature bamboo stalks. The collected bamboos are peeled from their outer shells and cut into pieces to increase their fiber content. Then, these pieces are cooked in a chemical solution at high temperature to separate the lignin and hemocellulose, thus obtaining a fine pulp. The gas cylinder manufacturing process consists of a series of careful steps to create safe and durable gas cylinders. First, high quality steel or aluminum sheets are used. These materials are selected to ensure that the roller is both lightweight and durable. The production process begins with shaping these sheets on large, rotating machines. This process turns the sheets into a cylindrical form. Cylinders that pass the tests are subjected to painting and coating processes to provide aesthetic appearance and protection. This process gives the cylinders a stylish appearance and protects them from external factors. In the final stage, the completed gas cylinders are carefully packaged and prepared for distribution. Thus, these rollers are on their way to be used safely in homes, restaurants, and industrial areas. The leather production process, known as tanning, transforms raw animal hides into durable and versatile leather. It begins with the selection of high-quality animal hides, often sourced from cattle, sheep, goats, or pigs. Once the hides are collected, they undergo a process called curing to prevent decomposition. This can involve salting or drying to preserve the hides until they are ready for further processing. Phil Galvin Industrial Coating protects metal products against rust with the hot dip galvanizing process. This process begins by immersing clean steel or iron pieces in a molten zinc bath at a temperature of approximately 450 degrees Celsius. Here, zinc forms a strong bond with the metal surface, creating a durable coating.
Seguin Moreau's barrel training begins with selecting the finest oak, primarily sourced from French forests. The wood undergoes a natural seasoning process, allowing it to breathe and develop the right characteristics over time. This aging of the staves outdoors for 18 to 24 months helps eliminate harsh tannins, leading to a smoother finish in the final product. Lucchini RS manufactures a wide variety of components, including railway wheels, axles, wheel sets, and brake systems. Their products are designed for both freight and passenger trains, ensuring reliability and efficiency in operations. Some vegetable oils are subjected to hydrogenation. This process involves bubbling hydrogen gas from oil in the presence of a catalyst. Hydrogenation helps oils solidify and increases their shelf life. It also creates a more stable product at room temperature. Other ingredients such as salt, flavorings, and colorings may also be added depending on the desired taste and texture. These ingredients are carefully controlled to achieve the desired margarine flavor profile. Once the margarine reaches the desired consistency and temperature, it is packaged into various containers, usually including tubs, blocks, or sticks. The packaging process is often automated to ensure hygiene and efficiency. Once packaged, margarine is ready for distribution to retailers and consumers. It is stored in temperature-controlled environments to maintain its quality. Tomatoes are first diced and then pre-cooked before being pushed through pulping machines, also known as cyclones. These machines remove the seeds, peels, and stems from the pulp of the tomato. This pulp is filtered via screens before being further processed into ketchup.
Cocoa beans are carefully sourced from West Africa. More information about where we source our cocoa can be found here. To ensure the highest possible quality of raw materials, cocoa pods are purchased only from the main crop harvested between October and February. Then, the cocoa pods are opened and fresh beans are removed, which are left to ferment in large piles under banana leaves. This important week-long phase allows the aromatic precursors of cocoa to develop. We start with the drying phase, then move on to the peeling phase. The beans are put into a large mill that separates the edible part to be ground from the outer shell. The ground nibs are processed to reduce the natural dryness of the cocoa and then roasted to enhance its flavor and color. We grind the roasted nibs to obtain the cocoa mass. The cocoa mass is then pressed to separate the fattest part from the dry part. Chicken farms may specialize in egg production, meat production, or both. Egg-laying chickens are typically kept in smaller cages or coops and are fed a diet designed to maximize egg production. Meat chickens, on the other hand, are typically raised in larger facilities and are fed a diet designed to promote rapid growth. Chicken Factory is a facility that specializes in the large-scale production of chicken meat. These facilities are often highly mechanized and use advanced technology to raise, process, and package large quantities of chicken meat for distribution to retailers, restaurants, and consumers. Once the chickens have reached their desired size and weight, they are typically processed using automated equipment that slaughters, cleans, and packages the meat. The meat is then shipped to retailers or other distribution centers where it is sold to consumers.
Turkeys are typically raised for their meat, which is a popular food item during the holiday season in many countries. Turkey meat is lean and high in protein, making it a healthy food choice for many consumers. In a turkey farm, the birds are typically housed in large barns or coops, which are designed to provide them with shelter, food, and water. The birds may be kept in cages or allowed to roam free, depending on the type of farm and the preferences of the farmer. Turkey farms may specialize in meat production, egg production, or both. Meat turkeys are typically raised in large facilities and are fed a diet designed to promote rapid growth. Egg-laying turkeys are kept in smaller cages or coops and are fed a diet designed to maximize egg production. In a rabbit farm, the animals are typically raised in cages or hutches and are fed a diet that is designed to promote rapid growth. Unlike chickens and turkeys, which are typically raised for their meat or eggs, rabbits are primarily raised for their meat, which is lean and high in protein. Rabbit farming is often considered a more sustainable and humane alternative to other forms of meat production since rabbits require less space and resources than larger animals like cows and pigs. Rabbit farming is also popular among homesteaders and small-scale farmers who raise rabbits for both meat and fur. Potatoes are typically planted in the spring, as soon as the soil is workable. The seed potatoes, small potatoes that are saved from the previous year's harvest, are usually cut into pieces that each contain one or two eyes, the small indents on the surface of the potato. The 
The pieces are then allowed to dry for a day or two before planting. Potatoes need a lot of nutrients to grow, so they are typically fertilized several times during the growing season. Fertilizer may be applied at planting time and then again several times throughout the season. Potatoes are usually ready to harvest in the fall when the leaves of the plant start to yellow and die back. The potatoes are dug out of the ground using a special machine called a potato harvester. They are then washed and sorted before being shipped to market. Tomatoes are usually started from seeds indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost in the spring. The seedlings are then transplanted outdoors after the danger of frost has passed. Tomatoes need plenty of sunlight, so they are usually planted in areas with full sun exposure. Tomatoes need consistent moisture throughout the growing season, especially during the flowering and fruiting stages. If there is not enough rain, they will need to be watered regularly. Tomatoes need a lot of nutrients to grow, so they are typically fertilized several times during the growing season. Fertilizer may be applied at planting time and then again several times throughout the season. Tomatoes are susceptible to a variety of pests and diseases, so they may need to be sprayed with insecticides or fungicides to protect them. Some farmers may choose to use organic methods of pest control, such as companion planting or natural predators. Tomatoes are usually ready to harvest in the summer when they are firm and fully colored. They are picked by hand and then sorted by size and quality. Some farmers may choose to pick tomatoes when they are still green and then ripen them indoors. Cucumbers prefer well-draining, fertile soil with a pH between 6.0 and 7.0. The soil should be tilled and amended with compost or well-rotted manure before planting. Cucumbers can be started from seed indoors three to four weeks before the last frost date or sown directly in the garden after all danger of frost has passed.
plant seeds 1 inch deep and 12 to 18 inches apart in rows 4 to 6 feet apart. Cucumbers need consistent moisture to thrive, so regular watering is essential. The soil should be kept evenly moist, but not waterlogged, to prevent diseases. Cucumbers are heavy feeders and benefit from regular fertilization. A balanced fertilizer can be applied every three to four weeks throughout the growing season. Cucumbers are vines that will climb if given the opportunity. Trellising can help to conserve space and improve air circulation, which can prevent disease. Cucumbers can be susceptible to pests such as aphids, cucumber beetles, and spider mites. Insecticidal soap or neem oil can be used to control these pests. Cucumbers are typically ready to harvest 50 to 70 days after planting. They should be picked when they are firm and uniformly green before they start to turn yellow or develop seeds. Sheep wool production involves the process of raising sheep for the purpose of collecting their wool. The wool is then processed and used to make a wide range of products, including clothing, carpets, and blankets. The process of sheep wool production begins with selecting the right breed of sheep. There are many different breeds of sheep, each with their own characteristics and suitability for wool production. Some breeds produce fine wool suitable for clothing, while others produce coarser wool that is better suited for carpets and other heavy-duty applications. Goat milk production involves the process of raising goats and milking them to obtain the milk, which is then processed and used for a variety of purposes, including human consumption, cheese making, and soap production. The process of goat milk production begins with selecting the right breed of goats. There are many different breeds of goats, each with their own characteristics and suitability for milk production. Some breeds produce milk with higher butterfat content, while others produce milk with higher protein content.
Raw salmon is picked at the processing plant and inspected for quality. The salmon is cleaned to remove any residue or contaminants. The internal organs and internal organs of the salmon are removed. Salmon is filleted to separate the meat from the skin and bones. The fillet salmon is trimmed to remove any remaining bones and unwanted parts. Packaged salmon is refrigerated or frozen to preserve its quality and extend its shelf life. Raw fish is taken from the factory and stored in cold conditions to preserve its quality. The skin, bones, and internal organs of the fish are removed and processed to make them ready for packaging. The processed fish is packaged in suitable containers such as vacuum bags or tins and labeled with product information and expiration date. Fish is shipped to distributors, retailers, and customers.
A crab factory is a processing plant that specializes in the production and packaging of crab products, such as crab meat, crab legs, and crab shells. These factories typically process large quantities of crabs, which are sourced from commercial crab fishing operations, and use specialized equipment to extract the meat and package it for sale. The goal of a crab factory is to produce high-quality crab products that are safe, hygienic, and appealing to consumers. An estimated 85,000 tons of steel were used for the bridge construction. Special sensors are installed in the interior cabins, bridge towers, decks and sheathed suspension cables to detect changes such as corrosion in steel structures. A special dehumidification system for beams, cables, and poles keeps the humidity below 40%, preventing the steel from rusting. Around 30 billion condoms are sold worldwide each year. About 4.3% of the world's population also suffers from latex allergies, making the most common type of condom unusable for millions of people. We design and operate our balloon production and balloon printing machines with our own team and operation system. All machine parks in our company are designed by our own team. Our machines, which are designed in accordance with technology, continue to be adapted according to advanced technology. Next is the pen. In this article, we will look at the production process of the pen in the factory. You will enjoy watching.
the smell of hot rubber wafts into the air as nearly 400 workers produce 275,000 balls each day. Workers pressurize slugs and giant molds to create hemispheres that look much like chocolate. Glue is applied to both parts. From there, workers feed the dog bones into the machine that wraps them around the ball and then pops them into an oven where they cure for 11 minutes. The prepared tennis balls are then packaged. Thank you.